Hi, everybody. Welcome back to this week's episode of the City Confessions. I am joined by Mila MG. She's the owner of Curves Beauty Bar, and they are known for Russian gel. You can see it here if you're looking at the uh, video. I'm going to have Mila explain what Russian gel is. But first of all, thank you for being on and welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor. <laughs> I am so excited because I feel like a lot of like with nail technicians, similar to a hair stylist, there it's kind of like therapy, right? Like you see your yeah. clients every month and you get to chit chat about their lives. And I feel like you and I connected very well with our beliefs and values and our yes. love for manifestation and the universe. So let's begin by having you introduce yourself to my listeners. Tell us who is Mila. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Mila. I am originally from Kazakhstan. I live in U.S. about nine years and about six and a half years. I live in New York City. So I was like one and a half year. I was traveling, traveling around. Uh, and I feel like New York City is the best city where I, I decided to stay and um uh, get a life, you know. <laughs> but you were not into this whole beauty world no. a few years ago. So tell us, what did you do before this? So before, uh, actually, my life changed after COVID, as you know. And um, before COVID, I was working as a paralegal uh, in a personal personal injury law firm. Oh my God, it's so hard <laughs> to say. <laughs> Yes. And um, yeah. And then um, it was actually I have international law degree from my country and I was planning to be an attorney uh, in the uh, in this country. And I was preparing myself for bar exam. Um, I finished my master's degree. So, yeah. And then when COVID started, I like it's everything just started happening in my life. Like I, I become little bit little by little. I decided to go to the beauty industry. If you want me, I can tell you more about it. Yes, no, I want to hear the story because you kind of <laughs> accidentally fell into it. You didn't even seek it. It almost like oh, sought no, you. No. no, uh the situation was like before COVID when I was working as a paralegal, I was unhappy with my job and with my boss. Uh because he was very strict person, but it's okay, but it's not about that mostly. The mostly is like I was getting all negativity from people who was having car accidents, injuries, and you see people struggling, right? Like they are like in a hard position of their lives. Um yeah, and I was like feeling all the pain. Um so it was kind of hard for me when I was coming home. I was feeling depressed, seeing people like situations happening like that. And I'm I'm more more per, like a positive side person it, that's why it was more hard for me when I see a lot of negativity around me so and I, I started feeling myself depressed as well mm -hmm. so yeah and when COVID started it was like kind of my upper legal job paused like everybody's like life paused and I was thinking I think I want to change it I feel like I want to maybe I can try some other new field in law you know like something more positive I believe in manifestation universe and I started doing a lot of meditation during the COVID time and I was hoping that universe will help me to find um, for me better position in law you know like I, I was not even focusing in the beauty industry at mm -hmm. all so yeah and I was like okay when after uh, COVID will finish maybe I'm going to start trying to give my send my resumes to another law offices and I'm going to start looking for a job. So also I was I was my question for universe was please help me to find something positive that um, brings me joy and happiness um, that led me to meet nice people. So I want to only have positive vibes around me, you know. I want to enjoy every day my job like so I will be more happier. And suddenly my friend in May or in June, 2020, she's like, Hey, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go for Russian nail school. And I would love to have you as a hand model. And do you mind to be my hand model? And I was like, yeah, why not? I look at my nails. They were so horrible during three months at home. <laughs> and I, I always have, a, I, I always had a nice nails and manicure because I love to take care of myself. Uh, and by the way, that time I already did for myself Russian nails in Brooklyn, as you know, it's, mm -hmm. there are a lot of Russian nail salons. So, and I was like, yeah, let me go. So I went with her 
and um, while she was cutting all my fingers and I was bleeding <laughs> I was like okay <laughs> and I started like it started kind of bothering me and I was telling my friend if I'm not your friend I will be leaving mm -hmm. you already you know mm -hmm. and she's like thank you for sitting and just like uh, be so patient with passions patience patient with yeah them. So, and I was like, okay. And then I was start, and I started listening to the teacher mm -hmm. and I was like, look, she's telling you do this, do that. Can you do this? This is not the way you are doing here. And she's like, stop commenting. I know better, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yes, I understand she's learning. It's her time. I need to be quiet. And the teacher was like, I feel like uh, this hand model is more loud than any, anyone's hand model. She's too active, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she noticed me. Uh, which I really appreciate because because of that she came to me and she said I feel like you understand very clear what I'm saying like maybe you are interested to do the nails as well and I said which <laughs> was interesting I said uh, me and nails never you know mm -hmm. never say never <laughs> mm -hmm. and look at you now <laughs> yeah I look at me now right and I was like, no, no. And at the end of the class, class was almost like eight to 10 hours. Oh, wow. Yeah, because, you know, they teach you mm -hmm. a lot of details. Mm -hmm. um, so, and she was like, maybe you should try. What are you losing? You're not, are you working right now? I'm like, no, I'm still sitting at home getting my unemployment benefits, nothing to do. <laughs> She's like, especially if you have money, you just buy my course and come. It's just gonna like... Um, spent only three four days of your life and just try if you what are you gonna lose mm -hmm. and I also this is my this I think this has triggered me a lot because my position I always like to try new things mm -hmm. uh and then I better like try it first and then mm -hmm. judge it you know mm -hmm. after so and I was like well yeah why not maybe at least I will learn to do nails for myself and I will save money because as I know in in Brooklyn uh Russian nails was costing like hundred dollars mm -hmm. enough and I was like, why not? And as, when I was working as a paralegal, I didn't make that, you know, good money. So mm -hmm. it was a lot of money for me that time. Mm -hmm. So I went with the intention of trying to learn to do for myself. So, and after like two months, maybe later, I went to the class, I started learning. And it's interesting that I really like it. On the second day, I was like, wow, this is so much fun, you know? And even my model, who was, she was actually telling me, if you have a law degree, why are you learning this? Like, she mm -hmm. kind of was like, why? Why do you need this? I think universe was kind of spoken through this person to me, mm. you know? Are you sure you want to do this? You know, like... <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yes. yeah. Because... because you know, yeah no not to cut you off but your story is so inspiring I feel like that is so true like there are opportunities where the universe challenges you and just make yeah. sure it's like are you ready because it's yeah. just like relationships right you can say like I don't want to be in this relationship anymore I want to be with somebody healthy or like you know non-toxic and yeah. then they provide you with somebody and they're like are you actually ready you know to leave are you they, they, it it tries to like give you one more chance because if you're not ready, then you would just be in the same position and yeah. same environment. So I love that you said that this person channel the universe. It's That's like crazy. amazing. Yeah. Because, you know, to be honest, I have even goosebumps. I always think like whoever we meet in our life, it's like always there is some reason and purpose. Absolutely. From, you know? Yep. Yeah. Some people guide us. Some people mm -hmm. teach us. Some people like bring us something, you know. Absolutely. Like, and even if it's like not a positive encounter, I always say that they are teaching you something. And it's sometimes they're like the blind spot that we have. Because yeah. I look at some people and I'm like, I don't know why they came into my life. They're no longer here. But even if it, again, was like negative, I definitely learned something about them. And sometimes it's a reflection of us and parts yeah. of us that we don't want to see and we don't want to acknowledge. Because if you're always surrounded by positive people, which is not a bad thing, yeah. you're also not really realizing, okay, where are my areas that I can work on? So yeah. that's amazing. Um but yeah so going back to your story yeah so it was like kind of so I was trying so hard I really like it and then I was had an idea and then my boss called me actually when I was on the third day of the course he's like hey are you ready to come back to the office we are opening now and I was like I said no I'm sorry <laughs> I'm not coming back mm -hmm. 
and I was thinking, you know, I felt like kind of a negative vibe from that mm. uh, place. And I was like, no, I'm not coming back. And I'm happy where I am right now. And I want to give a try. And I decided to give myself time one year just to, um, you know, like not Love focus that. on the law, just to decide to do nails only, you know, and just chill, you know. So, and my teacher actually provided me with a job. She's like, I feel like she had that time 10 students and she's like, I think you're very talented. I see potential in you. You need to try this salon. You need to go and uh, try. So I was like, okay, I will try. So I went to the salon and started practicing because when you start working as an nail tech, it's super hard, especially in Russian nails, because mm -hmm. it's a lot of details. You mm -hmm. know, already it's two mm -hmm. hours. Imagine for the student yeah. who just started, it's like four hours. It's, it's like takes minimum four to five hours, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think my my number one uh, good thing was about me that I was scared to cut people, which is very good. Now I know when I hire people, I, I can tell if she's uh, potential or not. She have potential or not. A person needs to be like I'm scared to cut people it's mm -hmm. very important you know it means I care about the person mm -hmm. when I do to someone else I feel like the same way I wanted to be treated you know yeah so it's interesting yeah so I was working for the salon maybe two weeks it was my first place in Brooklyn <laughs> they were not nice to me <laughs> But, you know, I understand why uh, I'm happy that it happened. Because if they were nice to me, I would stay in Brooklyn mm -hmm. and you guys never meet me yeah. in your life. <laughs> so they were like not nice. And the girl who was uh, boss, my boss that time, she was like, after the second week, she's like, I'm sorry, Mila, you we're not going to work. I think you and Nelsa are not mean to be together. And I don't see you potential in you. And I don't know why oh. she was referring you. I just uh, wish you good luck, but you will never be good nail tech. I said, thank you. I smiled. <laughs> you know, I didn't yeah. think it was in mm -hmm. a negative way. I was actually like happy that mm -hmm. she let me go because I had this uh, idea in my head already on the third day when I was working for her I was like I think I need to move from this place somewhere mm -hmm. like uh, uh, like Manhattan you know because mm -hmm. my English is good none of these girls were speaking English they only speak Russian they don't know mm -hmm. English and I was kind of shocked um, why people doesn't speak English if we live in New York City mm -hmm. but it's okay too you know they have their own level uh, it's good for them but my um so when she fired me i was so happy and i actually appreciate her that she fired me and and next day i found a job in manhattan so i was started working for another salon in manhattan mm -hmm. and that salon i really appreciate her too because she believed in me and she saw that i have a big potential and it's interesting also i was only one who was speaking in english in her salon mm -hmm. even she didn't speak english anyway <laughs> it was fun so I grow in six months, I become top nail tech. And then I become so popular and busy that people wanted to book with me in two months in advance, but it was no room uh, for mm -hmm. booking with me. And, uh, and my clients start telling me, Mila, I don't want to lose you. I want to come to you only. Why don't you start your own business? And I was like, I don't know. I feel like I don't want to leave my boss because mm -hmm. I was so comfortable on mm -hmm. that space, you know? And she really doesn't want me to leave too because she, I was number one at her mm -hmm. salon. You know? uh, and I'm a very positive person and I always like make clients happy. I never um, argue with people. If they want something, I always do. This is how I learn. Actually, I challenge myself to learn to do designs. So I can do it like anything, right? In mm -hmm. two hours. A lot of nail techs, they cannot do like a lot of stuff in this time of period because mm -hmm. I was pushing myself like I want to do better I want to do better I like mm -hmm. it I like it I was curious so and yeah and then I was like okay I think it's time to move on and I was like also universe I was asking universe should I move on or not or should I stay and then uh my clients started like no Mila you have to because I, I cannot book with you anymore a lot of clients started like losing me because I was overbooked with other people and I was like, okay, let me try. So I quit the job. I tell her like, I think two months notice. And of course she was upset, but what can I do? We need mm -hmm. to put ourselves um, out of comfort zone to, to grow, you know? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And then I was like, Maria, and I was like, okay, where I'm going to go now? I don't know anything where to rent the space, where to do like, uh, and I was like, okay, I trust the universe. If it's meant to be, 
I'm, uh, yeah. everything will come to my life. If not, I just take a break for two, three months and I'm just going to start preparing myself for bar exam because mm -hmm. I remember I gave myself one year and that was exactly the year where I have to decide last year. <laughs> so, and then I was, uh, my friend contacted me uh, after like two weeks. She's like, let's meet for a drink. I didn't see you for a long time. We decided to meet up and then she said, what's going on in your life? I told her I quit the job and now I feel like I'm going to start my own thing, but I don't know where to go, what to do, how does it work? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. and she's like, she's like, you know what? I feel like whatever you do, you, you just need to start. And I feel like you're going to be successful because you have uh, all the qualities that needs to be and a good uh, person, nail tech. And she's like, don't even worry. And I was like, okay. And then she said, by the way, you know, I know someone who is willing to give you space for rent. She was actually looking for a girl already for a few months, but she couldn't mm -hmm. find anyone. And I was like, wow, this is the sign, you know? Mm -hmm. And I texted this girl. This, uh, So I went to her and she gave me this space. And I was like, okay, I like it. And it was just a tiny space. All my original clients who comes to me from last year, they, they know this space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like I was so happy Marianne because I was like okay this is my place this is my start point you know and I was like okay what what should I do now should I prepare myself for law or should I continue this okay, I said okay let's do it at the same time why not you know mm -hmm. and when I started only like I had five people five people that I know who was like three of them my friends and two of them only my previous clients mm -hmm. I didn't take any clients from other salon I feel bad because it's not nice you know but only two of them knew my uh, phone number and they're like no we would like to come and support you I was like okay that's so nice of you if you want to come so I had only five clients and they started coming to me they came first week it was like so empty <laughs> I was like okay not bad not bad I started doing my Instagram uh, and one of them actually uh, such a sweet girl uh, she's still my client I love her so much she actually uh, friends with one of the influencer who mm -hmm. she bring to me because not she didn't like call her like oh you have to go to me or something she did her nails with me and then she went for an event where she saw like they were connected mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. and she asked wow your nails look so amazing uh, like uh, who did it to mm -hmm. you she's like oh, her name is Mila you need to contact her so she came to me to, she did appointment in two weeks later mm -hmm. after I started my business which is crazy too because I was thinking also Marianne where I'm gonna get the clients mm -hmm. like how does it work because before I was just going to the salon and they were providing me right. clients you know and I'm so new I don't know so she came, she didn't even say anything, who is she, which is, was nice. I like it a lot. If she did, I would be so nervous, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> did something right. wrong, you know? Yeah, and she came, she did her nails, and we had a nice chat, like, with you. So, and she's like, she was also inspired by my story because she told me, like, for, like five or six years ago that time she also used to work for finance and she quit mm -hmm. her job and she's become doing her blog now mm -hmm. she's successful I was like wow we have very this similar mindset you know and I really like it by the way I feel like all my clients actually I was just gonna say me, <laughs> like me you know yeah you attract the, like a certain energy yeah and so I feel like you you whatever you put out there is what you get back yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And so I was so happy to have this conver conversation with her. It was very fun. So and then she left and um, and then she just tagged me on Instagram. And I, I was like, OK, I only have like, I don't know, <laughs> 200, 200 people, some random mm -hmm. people who follow yeah. me. And when she left, it just just my phone was like blowing, you know, I was shocked and everything starts from there. <laughs> No, I love your story. And you answered so many questions because I was going to ask, you know, like what was the hardest part about all of this? Whenever I hear you speak, you keep talking about like positivity, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So where does that positive mindset comes from? Like, were, were you always like this as a child growing up? Or did you tell yourself, no, I'm going to choose to be positive? How did you develop this mindset? Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, I think 
I feel I consider myself happy child because mm-hmm. I have mother and father. I'm healthy. My parents healthy. I'm happy. I have sister. You know, like this is already happy for me. You know, I feel happy. Uh, and yeah, and my mom and dad actually, when I was a kid, they read a lot of uh, books about manifestation. Mm. They were doing even a vision board. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's interesting because my first vision board was eleven or twelve years old when I was yeah. I did with my parents. Oh my god! It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's cute. Natural. Yeah. Yes, and it came true. And I remember my mom even was telling me, when you wish, you have to wish it as a present time. And my dad too. So I was like, kind of influenced by my parents, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and But 11, 12 years old, I was not like, um, uh, how to say, um, I was doing a vision board, but I didn't think about life seriously. I was just putting like, oh, I want a Barbie. I wanted this. I want just shoes. I want bags, you know? Mm-hmm. But then I don't know why, when I was 16, 15, uh, when I was entering to the college, to the university, uh, I went very young because I was super smart at school and I was skipping two classes. Um, I did vision board and it's crazy because um, I didn't even think about USA at that time, you know, mm-hmm. but I don't know why I saw on magazine Statue of Liberty and I just put it on my vision board. <laughs> and I said, I'm living in this city and I uh, like next to Statue of Liberty, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and it's crazy when I was uh, first time I came here when I was 22 and my mom was like can you imagine this is your vision board and you're you maybe you mm. will be there mm-hmm. I said but I was visiting you know mm-hmm. so it's crazy how it comes true and also second uh, thing is also I'm trying to be because when you grow you you meet a lot of face a lot of problems in mm-hmm. real reality especially when you start living uh, by yourself in a different country Mm -hmm. and this was very hard time for me uh yeah and I was keep keep telling myself I want uh, everything's happened for the reason and everything happens for the good reason you know so I try to be positive and to be honest I noticed in my life that the older I'm getting if I want something um before I was like asking I didn't know how I'm gonna get now I feel like I trust in my like in myself Mm -hmm. I trust like I want something I just see it in my like I feel it that it's in my life already and I just forget about it just let it go and after a while like maybe sometimes it can happen one month sometimes it can happen in one year but it's happening in your life you know I have a goosebumps because it's crazy how it works like I don't know and my last vision board by the way I did on 2020 and I said whatever I do and I put like success I'll be going up only and I'll be like meeting new people and whatever I do, it's going to be very beautiful, very nice and successful. And I feel like it's going this way. (laughs) I love that for you. And I couldn't agree more. And I'm also getting goosebumps because I truly love the way that you said it's about how it makes you feel. Like sometimes you can ask somebody, where do you see yourself in five years, 10 years? And they can say like, I see myself owning a business, you know, making X amount of money, but that's all great. But it's like, how are you feeling? Right. And that's why like me as a new mom too, like I'm challenging myself to like raise my son in a way where he's um, supporting him in whatever he does and I don't want to tell him because I've learned this like what do you want to be when you grow up like the person you want to be like how are you going to feel at that time right it's not like I want to be a doctor I want to be successful it's like I want to be a good person or I want to be like kind to the world so it's just amazing that you're not focusing on these labels no 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 I always like I want to feel like inside like happiness exactly. joy you know? like yeah because I feel like when you do whatever you love it just it makes you like for example right now I am at the stage of life where I wake up every morning and I always say oh my god thank you god that I have the job that I love mm-hmm. I want to go my to my job you know even like oh I'm gonna see this client this client mm-hmm. oh my god I miss this client you know like this person not even client even this person oh my god I want to hear her story here like it's crazy how it works gratitude truly 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 will change your life like I feel like it's all about perspective and again it's like energy like when you verbally say what you're thankful for something happens in your body right right? where you automatically whether you're having a bad day or something goes wrong it just shifts so it's like (laughs) it's amazing I can go on and on about this I know me too I love (laughs) it So 
my podcast is called The City Confessions. I wanted to bring it back to the city. Around the six to seven years you've been here, what is a confession that you can share with all of us? And I always preface this by saying it's whatever you feel comfortable sharing. It mm-hmm. could be about personal. It could be about dating in New York City. It could be about business. It could be a fun fact. Yeah, Mila, what's your city confession? <laughs> okay, that's interesting. <laughs> I need to think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, take your time. I know every time somebody comes on, they're like, wait, I am I'm I need a moment. You know, so I don't know why uh, when you asked me this question, I don't know why right now it came to this to my mind. And when you live in New York City, I read it somewhere or I heard somewhere, you're always looking for an apartment to live. You're it's always so looking true. for a boyfriend and you're always looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you relate to oh, that? Thank God, I'm not looking for a job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I already found my apartment. Okay. <laughs> now I guess only looking for a man. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm trusting universe, so mm-hmm. yeah. Crazy. So your confession is like the other parts of your area in your life, you're kind of, you know, good and happy, but yeah. on the on like the side, you're kind of looking for a partner? <laughs> kind of, yeah, why not? It's already time, I think, like, and especially right now when I do, this year I did crazy amount of wedding nails and um, <laughs> nails, and they're giving me motivation now. I also were like, oh my God, I also want to be in a relationship and I want to be in love. I remember telling you in one of our sessions that there's a season in your life for everything, mm-hmm. right? So like from 2020 to 2023, so I would say the last three years, it was a time for you to truly focus on your business. You literally switch careers, which one is amazing. And forever for anybody listening, I believe you can have multiple lives in one lifetime. Um, and two, when your business, I'm not saying slows down, not at all, but when it when it starts to just just you know run, the engine just starts running without you even attending to it then you can also be like, okay, this is a time for me to introduce love. But like you said, your belief in the universe will just allow you to be who you are. And when it comes, it comes. Yeah, actually, a lot of my clients gave me uh, advice. Thank you so much, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) They told me I need to take a notebook and write down all the qualities in men I want, Mm -hmm. which I never, ever did. Feel it. Yeah, and which is crazy. I'm like, I I believe in manifestation. I manifested so many things in my life, but never a good man, you know? Mm -hmm. So, and I did it like a few days ago, actually. And I think I'm going to add more, some Mm -hmm. more qualities because (laughs) it's very hard. As you should. Yeah. As you should, because let me tell you, the person you decide to be with is the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. Yeah. Especially if you want to like have a family and all that, like, who you are now is one thing, but who you choose to, you know, be with and marry and all of that literally is the deciding factor and vehicle for like the the X amount of years, you know, that yeah. you have on this earth afterwards. So I feel like people forget that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But thank you so much for your money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so we are wrapping up. So I have a fire round of New York City questions to ask and you can answer it with the first word or thing that comes to your mind okay interesting okay so what's your (laughs) favorite thing about new york city food okay what's your least favorite thing Mm, uh trash (laughs) what's your um go-to spot or like your favorite cafe restaurant or speakeasy bars do you have but do you have a specific one or um I can't remember right now, but I have like few, but okay. it's on my Google. Yes, you'll you'll add some on the show notes and people okay. can, can yeah. look at it. To describe New York City in one word, what would it be? Oh my God, magnificent. And if you can thank New York City for one thing, what would it be? <laughs> oh my God, sky, sky uh, buildings, how it's called? Yeah, skyscrapers. Yeah, skyscrapers. <laughs> oh, I love that. Nobody has ever said that. Well, Mila, our time is, you know, cutting short, but I want to thank you so much for being on. I know you were super nervous, but you were amazing. I feel like you're a natural storyteller. Even though I've already heard your story, I still feel inspired. And that's what I love. Like after this, I want to 
do things you know out of my comfort zone so thank you <laughs> thank you so much Marianne for having me it's such an honor to be on your podcast oh my god I'm so excited <laughs> yes and for those listening or watching I'm gonna have all of Mila's information in the show notes and if you haven't tried Russian gel again this is amazing it's been like five weeks you have to again thank you everybody stay tuned for next week's episode and I'll talk to you later bye, bye. <laughs>